Okay, Cherubs, so this is a model of the universe from 1596. It comes from a book historians call the Mysterium Cosmographicum, but the real name is much longer than that. The author is Johannes Kepler, and the model is as elegant as it is interesting. It may be totally wrong, but this model, and the belief that the universe is constructed to be beautiful, resulted in laws of motion that are still used today. Let me explain. So, on July 9th, 1595, Kepler stood in front of his small class and drew this on the blackboard. I know what you're thinking, the Deathly Hollows, but that's not what he was thinking. He was teaching a math class, and at the moment of drawing this, he came to a realization that he thought was likely the key to creation and the entire universe. He later wrote that the delight that I took in my discovery, I shall never be able to describe in words. What he realized was that the proportion of those two circles matched the proportion of the orbits of Saturn and Jupiter as they understood them. Understand that Kepler was a deeply spiritual man who believed that the universe was constructed by God. He further believed that God was certainly a mathematician who constructed the universe on mathematical principles. So when he realized a circle circumscribing an equilateral triangle has a relationship to an inscribed circle within that same triangle that could be mapped to the universe, well, he kind of flipped out. Furthermore, Kepler knew that there could only be five possible platonic solids. A platonic solid is a polyhedra, a three-dimensional shape where every side and every angle are exactly equal. Think of the number of possible dice that can be created. There's only five. The tetrahedron, cube, octahedron, dodecahedron, and the isocahedron, the 20-sided die of the D&D &D fame. This answered a question that Kepler had been asking for a long time. Scientists only knew of six planets at the time, and Kepler wondered, why are there only six planets and not just one, or twenty, or a hundred? There were five possible perfect shapes, and those shapes define the orbits of six planets in a geometrically beautiful universe. It was perfect. And this is the visual result. Each ring of this model defines an orbit of one of the planets, and the platonic solid fits neatly into those orbits. Now you'll notice that this is a heliocentric model of the universe, meaning that the sun is at the center. This position wasn't very popular at the time. In fact, he was the first person since Copernicus about half a century earlier to propose this in any sort of serious way. The pursuit of this vision for a beautifully mathematically constructed universe led him to develop his three laws of planetary motion, which are still useful today. Now, I talk a lot about composition on this channel and how paintings become engaging through the arrangement of objects. In the case of Kepler, he assumed a perfect composition of the universe. This spiritual belief, combined with rigorous mathematics, led him to an impressive understanding of how the universe works. So the thing I find so cool about this is that it's a classic Gettier case. The philosopher Edmund Gettier discussed situations where somebody pursues incorrect evidence but arrives at a verifiable conclusion. Imagine you pull into a street because you see a green and white sign and believe it to be a Starbucks. When you get closer, though, you realize that the sign isn't a Starbucks at all. But luckily, there is indeed a Starbucks just a few stores down, but without a sign. Your belief was true, even though the path you took to get there was flawed. Cases like these overturn the conventional definition of knowledge as a justified true belief. Kepler's pursuit of a mathematically beautiful model of the universe based on only six planets led him to formulate these laws of planetary motion. His formulas remain true even if his path to get there was flawed. If you head over to the channel Up and Adam, Jade, who helped me with this video, will give you a thorough explanation of these laws and a deeper beauty of the mathematics involved. You might even see me pop in and talk about history in her video as well.